Reformation Sunday. It's so good to see all of, so many of you in your Reformation Red today. Uh, we are having a celebration of Holy Communion because in the Lutheran Church this is a festival day. And so there's a reason to celebrate and have that assurance that our sins are forgiven through just Jesus' body and blood. Um, next Sunday in our worship we will have the remembrance of those who have been called to glory over the last year. So if there are family or friends that you would like to add to the list, the clipboard is out on the wooden table in the hall, or you can still call the office tomorrow or Tuesday morning first thing. We'll be making that list on Tuesday to have it prepared for next week. And we're happy to have Pastor Pudo back with us today. Um, his wife is not on the organ bench as it has been common when Pastor Padola is with us. She had hand surgery this week, and he told me this morning that things are going very well for her. So Judy is up on the organ bench, and Pastor, I think we are ready to begin our worship. Hey, good morning, Saints of St. John. That's a wonderful day to you. Um, yes, I, the most important thing I have to say is about my wife. Uh, she had hand surgery on Thursday, and um, the doctor told me as she was recovering, she will not be kind of me for the next couple of weeks because the pain was so much. This morning, turns out she is one of the best. Um, all these surprises, I don't know why I heard this. Uh, turns out that. This morning she said to me, I think I'm going to just continue the office for the disease of the telephone. Okay. Um, two other things. Our service today is, in the hymnal is divine service five, which is adapted from Luther's book to Mesa, the German mass, where he introduced the idea of using hymns in place of the, the Gloria and, and so forth, the song for the and our state and so forth. Um, so this service is adapted from that, and so we'll be singing hymns that are actually paraphrases in many cases of those parts of the liturgy. Uh, that was Luther's idea. And, but there is one change, we will sing the Santos, the Holy, 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 immediately following the Lord's Prayer rather than the way it is in the world. We move that introduction to the Lutheran institution after the Santos. Other than that, that we're ready to say was um, one of Luther's hymns, one of those be pithy and for change. Lord, give us steadfast in your word.
So I can enjoy your good year and hear you sing. We invite you as you are able to stand for the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the name of the Lord, let us from the end with a true heart and confess our sins to our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who grant us forgiveness. Help us in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgive me. Merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being.
grace and truth, protect and deliver us in times of temptation, defend us against all enemies, and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Jesus said, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, that if you are willing to accept him, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not roar. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, written tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We remain standing as we sing together the creed. supposed to be here.
and in particularly our spiritual life, the question isn't most importantly can you hear it? The question is, are you listening? We've all experienced that in our daily lives. We're bombarded every day with sound, with words, with images, with visuals, and sometimes we just sh shut down. We don't listen. Sometimes that even happens with our emotions. In a way, Jesus is addressing this issue in today's Gospel reading when he says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This text follows immediately after that story at the beginning of this chapter of Matthew. You remember when John the Baptist's disciples came to Jesus. John was in prison now. And his, some of his disciples came and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Our text today is an extension of that response that Jesus gave to that question. Much of this text is very difficult to interpret, and commentators can't agree anywhere on what it means. But there are things we can say on the basis of this text that fit in with our Reformation Day celebration. John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. He has been pointing forward to the one who would come after him. And Jesus here indicates that John represents the spirit of Elijah. Fulfilling the final words of the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Scriptures, as it's called, where it says in Malachi chapter 4, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Jesus says, If you are willing to accept it, John is the Elijah who is to come. If you are willing to accept it, that is a key to understanding all of this text. The reception of the truth, as someone has written, depends on a person's attitude. If you go into any situation thinking you already know it all, you're not going to really listen. And I don't have to tell you how much that's happening in our world, in our culture, in our nation today. In fact, you can go through all of life and only listen to the radio programs and the TV programs that agree with your point of view and thus never really listen in any new and fresh way. The hearers Jesus is addressing do not have the proper attitude. They are not open to what God is doing through Jesus. They are hearing, but not listening. And so he has to address them as he does. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Living New Translation phrases this passage as follows. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. A little bit of interpretation going on there, but I think accurate. Outward hearing is not enough. Real listening calls for faith. Now you well know that one of the three principles of the Reformation is sola fide. Faith alone. This was the issue St. Paul was addressing in today's epistle reading from Romans. And as you probably know, that particular passage was the place that Luther first got that aha experience and realized, as he described it later, it was like the gates of heaven had opened to me. He realized he could not earn the righteousness that he needed before God. 
And so Paul says, the righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. It was that great discovery that gave Martin Luther the freedom of his soul. That this righteousness of God was not what we can accomplish, either by our own works, or by purchasing an indulgence, or worshiping certain saints' relics. That righteousness with God is what God offers freely as a gift because of what Jesus has done for us. In his shed blood and nowhere else, we receive forgiveness for all that separates us from our Creator. It is faith which grasps that truth and holds on to it for eternal life and joy and peace. Jesus' contemporaries, many of them, were lacking that faith. So they were unable to receive the gracious love that Jesus was offering them. The loving mercy that he was offering to all. He compares his critics' attitudes to chattering children whose ears are closed. They find reason to reject John the Baptist. He has a demon because he is too austere. They reject Jesus because it is of, he isn't austere enough. And besides, he associates with the wrong kinds of people. Tax collectors. Sinners. They won't experience joy. They reject solemnity. Because they seem like many of our contemporaries to just want to be dissatisfied. They rejected both the heavy law of John and the gracious mercy offered by Jesus. A parallel thing was happening in Luther's time. People were studying the scriptures, they were hearing the word, but they weren't really listening because they approached it with a whole set of assumptions that made them not able to hear what the scripture actually teaches. So it was, as you well know, a tremendous struggle for Luther before he finally found that peace with God. Alec Metaxas, in his book on Luther, published back on the anniversary of the 17th, points out that we somehow have to explain what happened to Luther. On the one hand, he was this burdened monk so terrified of God's judgment that he would literally sometimes beat himself almost into a state of unconsciousness trying to atone for his sins. And then Metaxas says, okay, what changed him from that into this wild, carefree, beer-drinking guy who loved the Lord and loved people, but had a good time doing it. The truth, of course, is that he discovered the forgiveness of God in Jesus. So, the question might be addressed to each of us. Are you truly listening? Or are you just hearing? You remember that John the Baptist delivered blistering criticism of sinners and called them to repentance. That's not the message that a lot of people of any age want to hear. We like to think that at least in our deepest souls, we are good and our motivations are noble. Sometime back I ran across a powerful example of the kind of pride we all fight against. It was, it's an excerpt from a letter concerning the preaching of John Wesley and the other, uh, the others of his movement. At that time, the Duchess of Buckingham wrote the following to Lady Huntington. <clears throat> Quote, I thank your ladyship for the information concerning the Methodist preachers. Their doctrines are most repulsive 
and tinctured with impertinence and disrespect towards their superiors, in perpetually endeavoring to level all ranks and do away with all distinctions. It is monstrous to be told that you have a heart as sinful as the common wretches that crawl the earth. This is highly offensive and insulting. And I cannot but wonder that your leadership should, should relish any sentiments so much at variance with high rank and good breeding. End of quote. Now, <laughs> we don't often hear anybody express their pride quite as openly, openly, even arrogantly, as that. But dear friends in Christ, you and I both know that is an attitude that always works somewhere in our own hearts. But contrary to the, the attitude of the Duchess, it is to all who truly hear and listen and repent and lay their sins at the foot of the cross and claim forgiveness earned for us there who experience the freedom and joy that Jesus promises. That is what Jesus came to earth to do. And that is what he did. And that is why we rejoice on this day in the work that the Lord did to restore the precious gospel truths through the bold, dangerous, and powerful proclamation of those we celebrate today as reformers. They teach us again that the Lord of all creation loves us and has given us his Son for the forgiveness of all of our sins and the faithful promise that in him, our Lord and Savior, we have the promise that we can look forward to an eternity with him in heaven. Rejoice then in this amazing truth. Almighty fortress is our God. In the name of Jesus, our victorious champion. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding to your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. You will note that our prayers follow a certain structure today. It is the structure that we all know. The Lord's Prayer. As you are able, please stand and we will join you. And for those serving our nation in the military, health and 
Testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do is offered as you drink it in the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
as you are able to invite you to stand for the first time in the Thank you. 